Good morning, and welcome to the first episode of Josh and Pat. I'm Joshua Klein, joined by Patrick Cassidy. And last night, we capped off week 11 of NFL play with the Chiefs playing the Chargers. Listen, both teams came into the season with mile-high expectations. And right now, it seems like only one team has delivered. It was a back-and-forth game. Kansas City started out slow, but then they found their groove. It's back and forth, and now we come into the last drive. Minute 46 left. Patrick Mahomes gets the, gets the ball, needs to score, and it was never really a conversation or a thought in people's brains that he wasn't going to score. He goes down, and in a beautiful fashion, 70 seconds or whatever it is, boom, boom, boom. Gets the job done, and now Justin Herbert gets the chance to make things right. Gets the ball, goes down, first play, sacked. Okay, not his fault, maybe it is, I don't know. Next play, interception. And now the conversation this morning is not, Justin Herbert is that guy, it's, was everyone wrong about him? Because this year, leading into it, he was the MVP favorite, everyone said, Justin Herbert, future Hall of Famer? Justin Herbert, MVP? Chargers, Super Bowl favorites? It was all facade. It was all smoke and, smoke and mirrors because he wasn't good. And, and listen, Patrick, I'm not trying to pull a LeBron James here. I'm not. But I said this. I said at the beginning of the season, what did has you he really? done? I did. What has Justin Herbert done yet? Because it's not win games. It's not win games. So, I mean, what do you think, Patrick? Is, no. is Justin Herbert the most overrated quarterback of all time? I'll tell you this. Did the preparation for the show this morning. Went, double-checked it, actually triple-checked it. Justin Herbert has won zero playoff games as a quarterback in the NFL. Oh, and by the way, has won zero playoff games as a quarterback in college football. Oh. Is Justin Herbert that guy? What I do know is he's average because his team's 5-5. Five and five. And listen, people are going to bring up the conversation of, yes, he's had weapons hurt this year. Uh, you know, Keenan Allen. I mean, that's a guy you love to have healthy on the field. Has not been healthy this year. But then you look around the league and, I mean, there's quarterbacks doing more with less. And I'm sure, listen, Justin Herbert... Um, he is a, he's a good quarterback. When he's playing healthy, when he's playing 100%, he's a guy, but it just seems like he's not the guy that everyone hopes that he could be. You know, rookie I mean, in year, all fairness, Josh, in, in all fairness, Justin Herbert's a really good quarterback. The Chargers are the Chargers. They are who we thought they were. They're still the Phillip River Chargers in an aspect of it. They just can't win a big game. They can't take the extra step. Justin Herbert he might just be the repercussions of that because he plays on the Chargers. If Justin Herbert was on any other franchise other than maybe the Browns or the Commanders, uh, Justin Herbert could be like 3-0 and in the playoffs right now. I, listen, I don't know about that. Chargers have had a – they've had good teams. Okay, we're not – people overlook the fact – on paper, the Chargers have a great roster. That's why – I mean, listen, there is a reason people were calling them the Super Bowl favorites. People were picking them. People were picking them. It was legitimate. Like, there were legitimate conversations going on talking head media shows that Justin Herbert's going to be a Hall of Famer when it's said and done. And, and like, listen, I, I'm all for making stories to talk about. But, but we need to slow down here because Justin Herbert hasn't done anything. He is 20 and 22 is a, his career record. Okay, he's below 500. Taylor Heineke is at least 500. Yeah, and and the thing is, it's like when you look at Heineke's teams, I I think I, when you look at it, I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna go to the step to say Heineke's a better quarterback than Herbert, but what I will say is he wins more. He wins more with with a worse roster. Listen, I I yeah I I think I don't know if there's a conversation. I think Herbert obviously I think Herbert's the better quarterback, but at the end of the day, it does not matter in this league if you throw a hundred touchdowns. You know, if, it doesn't matter if, you know, you have the perfect QBR. If your team's not winning games with you under center, that's a problem. And Never some forget people, when the Trent Dilfer led the 2000 Ravens to the Super Bowl 
when Rex Grossman led the two, uh, led the Bears to the Super Bowl. You got. I mean, you don't yeah. have to be a great quarterback. Listen, you just it, listen. There's winners and there's losers, and I'm not saying Justin Herbert's a loser. I'm sure he's a great guy, but he he might be a loser. I think Justin Herbert's a loser. I put it on the ticker if I could. But yeah, should, should so, he cut I, his hair again? You know, he might. He might, and um, I, I I don't know. It's so it's it's interesting. Okay, you got Herbert who you know, and and the Chargers who came into the season high expectations. And, and under delivered, and then we we move and we we go to, you know, another team who, this listen, they came into the season, no expectations. The expectation was if they win a couple games, people are going to be mind blown, and, and and they got win. The Jets came into the season, and they were told like they're written off by everybody, and and then they go in and. They figure out a way to win games, and then they sit. And yesterday, they're sitting at the top of the division, and if they they could they had the opportunity to make a statement win against the Patriots. And when I tell you, man, most boring game of football of all time, Jets versus Patriots was awful. Okay, it was three three going into the final play. Of regulation. That's just football. And it's not football. That's not football. Okay? Listen, that may be your great-grandfather's football. That's not football. Okay? Football is entertaining. That was... I mean, like, I could watch so many things that are more entertaining than a 3-3 football game going into the fourth. And I get Bill Belichick. Hey, that's the kind of games he likes because he's a defensive-oriented guy. You know, hey... To build, if you score four points and win, that's a good day. You know, shut up, shut nice up. Accent there. I, I don't know who that was, but yes. So, so it's three three going in, and and the conversation. Listen, the Zach Wilson is not going to get hated on enough today, and so I think I'm going to try to contribute to make sure that it happens. Zach Wilson, you have the opportunity to come in. To win over this franchise, to win over the fans who have had nothing. You can come in, you can win, you can solidify you guys as the division leaders. And you can only put up two inches of offense per play in the second half. Listen, I, I'm not claiming to be an amazing football player. I'm not, you know? Listen, when I go out on the field during flag, intramural flag football season, people respect me. People people show me, or, you know, they know I'm a guy. They know I'm a guy out there, okay? Is that why your team lost? That's, an, hey, it's not a one. If it's just me out there, it's a different thing. But, you know, there's it's a team. It's a team. We, we've lost as a team. But, but I swear, today... That if you put me in an NFL game, one play, I could get more than two inches. Guarantee it. Guarantee it. For one play. I mean, you're telling me I can't go. Oh, quarterback dive. No, I'm telling. I'm telling you, you wouldn't do that against the defensive lineman. I'm shifty. But that's not the okay, point. But this the is point not, that's this not the point. This is not a not, conversation about me. It's not a conversation exactly. about me. The conversation is about Zach Wilson. Absolutely terrible. And then, and then, as if the locker room wasn't already going to be upset, he goes off and he says this. The, as an offense, though, I mean, when you guys are only able to score three points, the defense only lets up three points. I mean, do you, do you feel like you let the defense down at all? No. No. Do you feel like you let the defense down at all? No, I don't. No, and he was so oh, he was not. quick. He was quick. Oh no, of course not. You know, because everybody knows that if you want, if it, if you're a defense and you want to win a game, you got to make sure you hold them to less than three points. Everybody knows well, that. Well, everybody, everybody knows it's an offense. If you want to win the game, you got to score three points. Yeah, so. it's like it's like I mean, listen, he hit the, the mark that he needed to hit. Okay, they went in the game plan and like, listen, if we can score three points. I think, I think we could win this game. Um, well, I mean, in all fairness to Zach Wilson, I mean that was more—that's uh, more 
uh, they put up more points than the Mets put up runs in Game Three of the Wild Card. So, I mean, shout out to them. Hey, that's great. I mean, because at the end of the day, you know, a good offense is averaging one punt per completion. It's a one to one ratio, and they were really close. They were really close to that because I mean, they they had nine completions, ten punts. So, you know, you get one more completion, you're like, hey, that's a great day of offense. But I don't understand. Zach Wilson's going to get murdered in this locker room. Because I think, you don't think the defense is like, man, we got a team. We got a defense. We got, we could, we could get it. We could do something here. Zach Wilson does nothing. And now, I'm, if I'm the defense, I'm calling for Joe Flacco. That defense is good. People on Twitter are calling for Joe Flacco, too. But here's the thing is Joe Flacco Mike White, would put up more than two inches, I'll tell you that much. Mike Mike White could also be the answer to some of it, as we saw Mike White go off last year in a couple games when he played. Here's the thing though. I mean, you even had Garrett Wilson, a rookie receiver, calling out the offense, you know, saying it it, it wasn't playing well. Robert Sala, he's coached up that defense great. They got some guys on that defense, they're playing out of their mind. They're doing their job. But, Zach Wilson, here's the thing. He's not playing good. He does have a little moxie. He's got some swagger, but you know what doesn't work when you put up three points is a little moxie and a little bit of swagger. We can ask hey, Baker Mayfield how about, about that. How about some accountability, man? That's all I'm saying. Like, listen, it's okay to play a bad game every once in a while. Like, those happen, but you got to be like, hey, yeah, man, like, offense, we got to do also, better. Also, the Jets are still what? I mean, the Jets are still sitting there. They're 6-4. and four. If you would have told any Jets fan, any member in that organization, hey, we're 6-4 and four after 10 games. We're in the thick of it. I think you signed. That being said, you're now in a position where this defense can win. This defense can do something. But the whole offense is holding him back. Yeah, well, the thing – listen, Patrick. 6-4 and four might not even – that like, they're in the – the AFC is so loaded. Like, you had a chance to win the division and you didn't. Yeah, you know, that's – I mean, There's a just, lot of football left, though. A lot of football left. A lot of football left, but I'm happen. saying, they're, hey, Zach Wilson. They're not going to win that division. It's uh, Yeah, you listen, this, it's it's tough for Zach Wilson out there. Um, and and listen, maybe maybe the Jets will figure it out. Maybe he's the guy. I say probably not. Um, but there's another another team that um, that's been looking for a guy. Not to play, to coach. Frank Wright um, was, listen, he was an interesting experiment in Indianapolis. I wouldn't and, call him an experiment. Okay, fair. He's an interesting, whatever. He brought in, he, you know, he had some highs, had some lows, mm-hmm. and and this year they stunk. Colts stunk. And, yeah. and, and hey, this is, oh, sorry, this is me having some accountability. I put them on my top 10. Preseason rankings going into week one. Colts are on my top 10. It's posted on Instagram at Picks and Pancakes. Make sure you follow. And, and I made a mistake. Colts were not a top 10 team. I thought so. I bought into the hype. Jonathan Taylor drafted in my fantasy team. I was like, man, the Colts team might, might be good this year. They stink. They stunk. Um, Frank Wright gets out of town and then, you know, Jim Mersey just takes off the entire coaching community and hires Jeff Saturday, a guy who's never coached before. And Jeff Saturday goes out and gets a win against the Raiders. And then the next thing you know, we're like, man, like this Jeff Saturday experiment, I'll call that an experiment. I think it's fair. That's that, fair. Is this, is this working? So they go in and they have a chance to go against the one loss Eagles in Indianapolis secure a win. And then, I mean, if they get this win, and we're talking Jeff Saturday, it's like, hey, he might actually get the job. And, and they come up close. And there's two th- takeaways that I kind of I ended this game with. Let, because it was let's close. hear them. Let's hear them, Josh. Takeaway one. Hey, Jeff Saturday actually, he might be somebody who can actually contribute um, and and be and give the Colts hope because the team looks drastically better. They have a lot more fight, I think, with him. But number two is Eagles are still frauds. Eagles are still frauds. I came in to the beginning of the season 
and, and I live here in Delaware, and I'm just surrounded by Eagles fans. And I said, um, Eagles stink. Eagles won a couple games. I still said Eagles stink. Who did they play? Nobody. And then they play some more teams and more teams. And then they play and they lose to the Washington Commanders, which I still don't think is a, a over phenomenal team. Above 500. Left but, hand up. Let's go. And they lose to them. And I go, okay, I still don't think you've played anybody and you're not undefeated. And, and, and listen, I went to war against some Eagles fans. Eagles fans on the internet, they, they are not happy with me. But, Eagles fans in real life, probably not happy either. But I still say, my statement stands. And then they almost lose the Colts. And listen, Jeff Saturday, yeah, sure, he's turning the program around. They look different. They're still not a good team. They're still not good. They beat the Raiders. That's okay, not Josh. impressive. And you're telling me that you almost lose to them? Sirianni on the sideline celebrating like he won the Super Bowl after that win. Listen, dude, it's you should be It's hard to win in the NFL, Josh. Yeah, guess what? Guess what? I'm sure that's true. But, that, but when you do win, that doesn't mean that – all of a sudden, like, oh, you're the greatest team of all time. Shut well, up, okay, Philadelphia. Shut up, Eagles. You guys are not good. You're still frauds, and I'm going to stand on that hill. Or are you? See, I did that. I said that on the internet. If you Eagles fans got mad at me. But, uh, but yes. Look, Josh, here's the thing. The Eagles, What's the thing? They have the one loss. I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, they're the greatest team ever. When you look at the NFC, though, the NFC is not strong. OK, they have a very realistic chance to make a Super Bowl run. Now, whether or not they win the Super Bowl, that's a different conversation. But when you look around them, they've already handled the Vikings once. And then you start looking around and you go, well, who else is strong in the NFC? I think the 49ers are on the come up. They're a team you'll have to watch out for. But the Eagles are a good team. OK, I don't want to call them. I'm not going to go as far as to call them frauds like you have. I, I certainly think they were better than the Cardinals team that was undefeated last year. They're certainly better than the Steelers team that was undefeated in 2020. Look, the Eagles, they haven't played that that many strong opponents. I'm not going to go say they're frauds because frauds don't make the Super Bowl. That's your guy. I'm just going to have to agree to disagree here. I think until they beat a team that I'm like, okay, they're good. You bring up the Vikings. Listen. Name those. Name I, those. What are, what are the teams that you think are good? Because you're gonna name all AFC teams, so be, so name them. Go. I, no, I listen. I, we this is not good for attention. They don't want to hear who I think is good. We all know who's good, okay? We know who's good, and and the Eagles haven't played any of those people. And and listen, and I brought this up in last week's episode of Picks and Pancakes, and I said, um, who have they played? And, and the answer was nobody. Because if you bring up the Vikings, well, okay, let's talk about the Vikings. You were, didn't play them at 1 p.m., so it doesn't count. And, and that leads us into our next conversation, Patrick, because it's a conversation we need to have. Because people on the internet are going to say, hey, is Kirko Chains dead? Is he dead? Because yesterday the Vikings looked awful, and, and they and they got destroyed, forty to three against the Cowboys, and I I mean I wouldn't say the Cowboys are an overly impressive team. I think they can show up at times, and I think that there's times where they don't show up. But I mean, if you lose forty to three, that's I mean you you got your butt kicked, and especially when you have Justin mm -hmm. Jefferson, who is a premier wide receiver in the NFL, and people are asking, hey, is Kirk Cousins dead? Did we maybe give him a little too much hype? Did we give the Vikings too much hype? And the answer is no. I don't, don't, why are you guys forgetting? Kirk Cousins um, is amazing I, at 1 p.m. And then in the national spotlight, he doesn't exist. This is not new information. So. Um, I wish that we had the, the clip right now saying they are who we thought they were. Kirk Cousins is exactly who we think he is okay he's great at one o'clock after that it's after his bedtime or something okay because he just he, yeah. he, he can't play the same level of football that being said i will go on record and say the vikings will win a playoff game okay they're going to because the nfc is not strong they're going to win a playoff game and it might even be a 425 playoff game because that's 
that's what you're looking oh, at. Man, that'd be <laughs> how crazy would that be? If if Kirk Cousins comes in and wins like a four o'clock game in the playoffs, immediately respect change. But also, listen, Kirk Cousins was twelve for twenty three for one hundred and five yards. Like, I mean, Kirk, you gotta you gotta show up. I, I'm sorry, like, dude, it, it, the narrative is just writes itself if you just don't do anything on these like. And, like, maybe do you think that there's a conversation in his brain where he's like, hey, listen, it's 4 o'clock. Everybody knows I don't show up at 4 o'clock. I don't even – like, do you think he's, like, he doesn't even watch film on those weeks because he just knows? He's like, hey, like, I could try my best. I could put it in the preparation. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. And and so – and that's the way it felt like. And Justin Jefferson, I, I don't understand how it's possible that one dude could be so influential. Like, just – he's completely open. Every single play, because remember, with Justin Jefferson, open is just him existing on the field. Because if you throw it anywhere in the vicinity of him, he'll catch it. And so I don't understand, like, dude, like Vikings, you gotta figure something out because that was embarrassing. And to lose to the Cowboys, I mean, dude, tough look, tough look. And in the, the the other side of this is, are the Cowboys completely back? I don't know. I mean. Looks like it. Dak Prescott and Kirk Cousins are almost the same quarterback. It just they don't have the prime time splits where it's it's so bad mm. when there's a certain time the game's scheduled. I think the Cowboys are proving themselves as one of the stronger NFC teams we have here, but it's going to be hard to overtake the Eagles there because of yeah. who they play the rest of the season and and the schedule like that. Uh. Uh, the Vikings look. They're, they're a good team. They still sit here at 8-2. and two. They beat the Bills last week. You can call it lucky. You can call it whatever you want. But a win's a win in the NFL. And that being said, I, I the people that were talking about Vikings winning the Super Bowl, let's slow down here. Let's let's win a playoff game. Like, last time you guys had the Minneapolis Miracle and all that stuff, Kirk Cousins was not your quarterback. You won one uh, playoff game with Kirk Cousins, and it was in New Orleans mm. at 1 o'clock. So... Yeah. yeah, we'll see what happens. I love. Hey, appreciate you having the research there, the stats. Uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. And and you know what I have stats on because and we talked about it earlier in the show. Because while while Kirk Cousins, you know, you know Kirk O'Chain's what conversation is is he dead? That's happening, and and the Cowboys. You know, I think winning the chains are going to be back. Is the is the conversation that maybe they are, maybe the chains come back. I don't know. Um, but there's another team that won yesterday who is not really on a lot of people's radar. Radar, and we talked about it at the beginning of the show, and that's the Washington Redskins. No, Washington football team. No, the Washington Commanders. Washington Commanders win yesterday, um, twenty three to ten. And, and this is the game with Taylor Heineke that people are like, okay, is this Heineke's team now? Um, oh, wait. Graphic. There Boom. it is. Uh, and, and, and to that I say, it probably is. And, and we as football fans, I think, need to show respect to the end of somebody's career. You know, when Big Ben retired... Say what you want. People were like, hey, thank you, Ben. You know, sure, your play at the end of your career didn't really look like it did at the beginning of your career. Or but, maybe not a great person. Or maybe not a great person. Maybe maybe he did some things to other people and, and to himself that you probably, should, you know, shouldn't be doing. And um, But we still, we showed him that respect. Because it was the end of his career. And I think now it's kind of time to start showing that same respect to another quarterback. And that's Commander Carson Wentz. Carson Wentz, hey, we just wanted to say we appreciate everything you did for the game. You we, are... We thank, we thank everything you did for the Commanders. Everything. I mean, this was... I mean... You just gave him a franchise quarterback. Taylor think, Heineke. You might have. Um, so Super Bowl winning backup quarterback... Carson Wentz, 
Uh, I was officially no longer going to be playing for the commanders per me, per everyone's eye test. Because for some reason, when Taylor Heineke's slinging it, they win games. And, and don't let this distract you from the fact that Taylor Heineke, you know, has five touchdowns and four interceptions on the season with a QBR of 46.4. Um, He's the exact opposite of Justin Herbert. He wins the games, but it doesn't look great. Exactly. I had no idea. Listen, you look at his stats. I have no idea how he wins games. No idea. It just like it doesn't make any sense to me, you know. But for some reason, when he's playing quarterback for the Commanders, they win games. I, I don't know how to explain it. It's like an anomaly. Um, and, and because of that, uh, Carson Wentz may never see the field again. Um, I also just want to say, Taylor Heineke, backup XFL quarterback. We've had the conversation before, but how good is Jordan Tayamu, the guy that started over? I mean... If I, you might need some some team needs to look into that guy right now, um, and yeah. So I, listen, Carson Wentz, great run. Um, I'm sure you were exciting to watch. I probably watched one game of yours, your, you know, my entire life. Um, but but hey, good job, Nick. Go. I, I'm assuming maybe you're probably gonna play backup for the next. A billion years because you're going to be paid, you know, very good money to be a backup quarterback. So, so that's I, I mean, think honestly gonna, it's a great situation for you. He's going to go the Andy Dalton route, I think. He, I, he might, he might, and um, and maybe you'll start, you know, at QB again. Hey, what? What about this? What happens if, you know, Commanders go to the playoffs, and then Heineke gets hurt, and then. Maybe Carson Wentz could come off the bench, Nick Foles style, go on a run. Hey. If that happens, I think the curse of Wentz, RIP Commander Carson, is gone. I think I think Wentz is totally back. I think he's back to MVP status if that happens. Because it's a total role reversal. Exactly. And and I guess well depending on that story, but Commanders win and now kind of shakes up things in the NFC East. And and we'll see how that goes. Um, I still don't think the Commanders are necessarily a, a, over a great team, but hey, they're left they're, hand up. Who are we? The Commanders, the commanders. winning games, winning games. Um, and so, and so, yeah. Now we're gonna go into um, a little Monday night preview. Um, so, 49ers minus eight going against the Cardinals. And um, and the Cardinals are banged up. Let me tell you, okay. Kyler Murray, hamstring questionable. DeAndre Hopkins, hamstring questionable. Some other way, McCoy, some other guy, McCoy, uh, questionable. Obviously, Hollywood Brown. I mean, out, out, probably not returning. Um, and then on the flip side, the 49ers. I mean, Christian McCaffrey sparked some life in this team. Eight points seems like a lot, and we're not going to hang out here too long. I'm, I'm just saying. I, I think DeAndre Hopkins and Kyler end up playing, and if that's the case, give me Cardinals, plus eight. I couldn't disagree more. I think if Kyler ends up playing, hammer the 49ers. I actually like the eight point spread with Colt McCoy. I think right now the Cardinals are a better team with Colt McCoy than. Call of Duty, Kyler. So does this change? I, I, does I would, that does that change if DeAndre Hopkins is not playing? No. Regardless, if if Colt McCoy's your quarterback, I I take the eight points. Wow. With the, uh, wow. With the but if not, then it's so. Then hammer the. This 49ers. is very. That's an interesting take. Wow, I didn't even think about that. Here's the thing, Colt McCoy. I listen. I just don't. I'm not really familiar with your game like that. So. Um, hey, Texas is back. You know, so is, so is Colt McCoy. Wow. It's great, you know, because Texas almost beat Alabama. So they're back. They got Arch Manning. Fives are good. Wow, wow. Well, um, well, that's great. And so final final uh, bit of housekeeping here. Um, U.S. plays Wales today in World Cup. First game for us. Uh, at, listen, all these soccer experts are saying that 
you know, England's a sh you know, shoe in to win the group, and then it's like, oh, it's going to be a tight battle for second place. I don't know soccer like that. But I do know is 0.5 favorites versus Wales. I feel like you got to take that because we're playing with, I mean, pride. Pride. That's what it is. Because last time, hey, we didn't even make the World Cup. You know? Boom, what do we got to lose? Nothing. But to, to be honest with you, it was almost like football terms. That was like our bye week. You know? It was. We, it, we, we were, we've been preparing we're for coming off of, we're, for years. We're coming off a bye. Okay? Mm -hmm. Team rested, healthy. Um, and, and I don't know how, what, you know, if U.S. fans travel well. Um, I'm assuming nobody's actually traveling to Qatar, if I had a guess. Uh, yep. Just because if you, you get there, you're gonna be staying in a tent, and the, you know, you fire have to, fest. You have to sign, you know, uh, like an NDA, and that says you're not gonna talk bad about it, and you know. So I, if I had to guess, there's not a lot of U.S. fans there, especially because football's happening, and you know, if this is summertime, different story. Uh, let's be real, nobody gives a crap. If this game wasn't on at two today, I wouldn't be watching. But it is on at two, so not. You know, it's not a conflict with football. Boom. I'm going to be watching. Disagree. Oh, disagree. Disagree. This is America's chance every – well, here's the thing. is the U.S. women's national team is really good, so America surrounds them. We give them a lot of hype, as we should. Uh, but this is our chance every four okay. years to give the men's national team some love. So I think we're going to huh. do it because this is the golden generation. Taylor Twelman told me this. When he said, what are we doing when they lost on a cow pasture against Trinidad and Tobago? He said, what are we doing? He said, this might be the best thing that happened. This could be the golden generation. He talked about Germany, uh, you know, missing the Euros or whatever it was. Because I'm not a, a you know, a, a footy head. Is that what this, I, Whatever. Anyway, footy all I know yeah, is yeah, golden generation, it. Taylor Twelman, Christian Pulisic, Captain America, hammer to the bank. Wow. Wow. Well, listen, um, that's the show. Oh, wait, wait. Not that. Not that. <laughs> um so we're gonna get this intro out here going i don't know if it's going or not anyway listen uh thank you for watching the first episode of josh and pat listen it not the best it's gonna only get better from here figuring only out better. figuring out the kinks working it out um but yeah it's gonna be every monday and then uh yeah we'll see you on thursday for this week's episode of Picks and Pancakes. Patrick, you have a wonderful day, and you guys have a great day as well. Peace.